to another lesson that goes with our 30 day ink challenge. So for today's lesson, I'm going to teach you about stippling using an ink pen. And I'm going to, it's going to be a bit of a dual lesson. Part of it will be um, shape and form using shading and we will create a sphere. But in the process, we'll also be learning about stippling. So what you will need for this lesson is you'll need a pen. Um, I've got a 0.3 Faber-Castell um, pen fine liner. Something that's similar would be great. But uh, a felt tip is easier than a ballpoint in this case because it's easier to create the dots. I also have a pencil and a ruler and a $1 coin. So let's begin. We're going to start by creating the bit of a, a template for our little design. We want to, we're going to create a sphere. So I want you to use the dollar coin. You might feel that it's a bit small, but we want it to be small because stippling can be very time consuming. And as your first little exercise, it's probably better to start small. So I'm going to draw the circle for my sphere. which is a perfect size by tracing the dollar. Now, as we go along, I'm also going to do another little one. You don't have to do this, but this is to demonstrate how the stippling is working. So I'm just going to draw up a grid. If you remember um, in a previous lesson when we did our cross hatching, we're going to be doing something quite similar to that. And um, each layer that we lay down with our stippling creates um, a darker tone. So that's what we're doing again today. But we're also going to be creating a sphere. So a sphere is a, a good shape to start with because it's smooth and round and creates a beautiful shadow. And by using a sphere, we can get the hang of how light affects the shape. So I'm just going to quickly draw this up. All right, so here we have, I have my little chart. You don't have to do this part. This is just to demonstrate what we're doing. And here is our circle. I want you to draw a, a put a cross where your light source for your shape and form is going to come from. So in my case, I'm just going to put a cross here and that cross indicates the light source for our sphere. Now we're going to put a surface. So we're just on the bottom of the sphere, we're going to draw a line. This is the surface that our sphere is sitting on. Now, Light, when it hits a shape, is coming in a shaft of light. So we're going to draw in the shaft of light. If we line up our ruler with our light source and the edge of our shape, we will draw a line like that. So this is indicating for us the light that is hitting our sphere. Now, obviously, if you're using a torch or something with a very hard light, which is ideally what we're doing in this exercise, the middle of that light shaft is the strongest light and we're going to put it in as a dotted line where that strongest shaft of light is going to be. Just draw it down the middle of that line. So that you can see this is the strongest light that is hitting our shape. Now, shadow is created by an object blocking the light. The shadow is kind of the absence of some of that light that has hit it. So if we looked at our shape here where we've drawn our shaft of light, the shadows are going to sit within this area that's been blocked out by the shape. So we're going to, a shadow is in the form, the similar shape to whatever it's hitting, but of course it's going to be elongated to, fix, to fit that area of the shaft and because we've got a circle, so that becomes an ellipse and we draw an ellipse that goes all the way out to that. Uh, edge of the shaft because that's where the light's being blocked. Outside of the shaft there is still light so it's still light and it was still going to have a white surface area but where the light has hit the shape it has blocked out the light going to the shadow. Also the strongest part of light is going to hit the circle here so we're going to draw a circle about that size that's where the strongest shaft of light is hitting that uh, sphere. Now there's also what we call the shadow line, which is where if we drew a line between where the light hits the edge, the edge of the shape, that's our shadow line. So I'm just going to put some labels in here so that if you want to go back and do it again, you could pause it and you could draw it. So this is going to be the lightest 
point, that is where the light hits the shape. We call this the shadow line. And this is where the shadow begins. So where the light has been blocked out by the shape, from here on it's going to get darker. So this is the shadow point. Or the shadow line, sorry. I'm just gonna rub it out and write the shadow line. Now this is the shadow that's created on the surface. We'll put surface shadow. And this is our shaft of light. So we've got a bit of a technical shape forming that we're going to use as the guide for our stippling. This um, edge that is furthest from the light, which is here, is going to be our darkest shadow. And also closest to the shape here is going to be part of our darkest shadow. Okay, so now we have a shape. So obviously our, our, as the light hits the sphere and it progresses around the shape, it's going to get darker. So we're going to divide our shape up into areas that we will use for our stippling. So this... Um, we're going to divide it in half and kind of let our line go with the curve of the shape. We're going to add another one here between the shadow line. I know it's getting a little bit small. But between the shadow line, we're going to have one, two, three, four spaces. We're also going to divide our behind the shadow line by four. So if we choose a spot halfway and we're going to draw a line like that following the line of the sphere and we'll divide that again into two more so we end up with eight areas we'll get eight different tones in our sphere and if i were to number them it would be one two three four five six seven eight it would be one two three four five six Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, should I label that for you? I'll put eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. So we are going to shade. As we're doing it, I'm going to do here as a demonstration for you how the, shadow, the shadows are building up, but you can just do it on your shape. So now we are ready to begin our actual stippling. Now I'm using my 3.0, or oh sorry, 0.3 pen. And basically with stippling, you're going to be doing dots and you want them to be evenly spaced um, and neat. You don't want, it's no scribbling or drawing lines. It is purely done with dots. So I'm going to begin by outlining my shape and I'm using, I'm going to keep them about, about two, about two millimeters apart is where we are at this starting point. So I'm just going to go around my shape, keeping my dots about two millimeters apart. I'm also using a tighter pencil grip like Cassie spoke about because we're doing more precise drawing at this point. We're not sketching quick lines or drawing uh, straight lines. We are doing dots that are precise. So I've outlined my shape. I'm also going to outline my shadow, keeping these dots roughly the same amount apart. And then I'm going to fill my shape with the stippling, the same space as what we've been doing, everywhere except space one. Okay, so we want to cover our whole shape. This is our lightest shadow, um, where where we have our most intense light, which is going to be phase one, we don't want to put any stippling in there. So to help me avoid that area, I'm just actually going to do an outline around that white spot. But then I'm gonna cover the whole shape again, keeping dots a similar distance apart. So the dots are around about two millimeters apart. And you're gonna go ahead and feel the whole shape. 
I'm going to speed this up in a sec so that you, it doesn't take as long, but I want you to take time to be two millimeters apart. Having done that, we're now gonna start our second layer. So we actually now have two of our spaces worked out. We have space one and space two, space one and space two. And so now we're starting with our layer three. So this time round, again, we're gonna cover the whole shape except for areas one and two. And we're trying to get our dot to just go between the dots that we've already done. We want to avoid hitting any of the dots that we've done, but we're still keeping them roughly two millimeters apart, but we're keeping it in the space. So if I was to do it here, you can see I'm kind of aiming in between. If I've got four dots there, I'm gonna create the five, the fifth dot in the middle. So we're going to apply that all over our shape. And we're starting in our zone three. So about here. So I'm gonna start. I will speed this up for you in a moment. And we're gonna cover the whole shape except space one and space two. Okay, now we've done that. We have covered it in our third layer. Across it, we've avoided zones one and two. And now we're going to start with our fourth layer. And as you've probably already guessed, we're going to work within tone four. So we're not going to go in the areas where we've identified as those first three tones. Again, we're gonna put our dots in between the dots that are already there. So we're trying not to hit dots we've already got. We're trying not to let them touch because that creates like a blackness. We're trying to do it in between, just like I did that. So now we're gonna start where our tone four is and we're gonna go in between, avoiding other dots um, as much as we can. And not going inside zone three. And I think at this point, we will not go all the way to the edge of our shadow either. We will kind of bring it closer, leave a couple of millimeters, say like two millimeters or the space of what you started with from the edge of that shadow. So now we've got four tones, one, two, three, four. And we're going to do the next tone, which is below our shadow line. So again, we're doing our dots, avoiding hitting the dots that are already there, and slowly we're getting a darker picture. So this zone five actually is almost straight across there where the shadow line is, and then we'll cover the rest of the shapes. Um, in here, we're going to just go in a little bit more from, the, from that second layer in there. So we're slowly getting darker towards the center of that shadow and towards the shape. So tone five. Great, so now we've done tone five and again now we're moving on to tone six. So tone six follows this curve here and again we're trying to fill the bits in between though you're going to find now you will be hitting other dots even if you don't intend to. It gets harder to avoid them but that starts to create the effect of giving the shape a bit more shadow. So you aim for the gaps but you will find that you will hit some but that's inevitable. But we want to fill again our whole sphere except for those tones that we've already done and we're filling we're putting the gaps dots in the gaps so how's your hand going there i find by this stage my hand is feeling a little bit sore because i've been holding my pen in such a firm grip um, so if you want to have a break and come back to it you can um, but I'm going to press on. So now we're doing tone seven. And again, like we've already said, we're just going to add um, some more dots. Again, trying, trying to aim for the gaps. But if you're hitting other dots now, that is perfectly to be expected. So we've got two tones left, tone seven and eight. And you should still be able to see slightly our lines that we drew for those. So seven is here. We're almost at our last one, tone eight. Now in tone eight, we will be definitely hitting other dots, but we're trying to um, 
be as smooth as we can in getting um, filling us those gaps in between. We still want some of the whites to appear, but we want to start to make them blend together. So tone, tone A, you might be losing that, um, that line now, but just try to remember where it is. It's kind of in this curve in this bottom half. And we're going to add more dots into the gaps. So as you can see in tone eight, we've just got a little bit of white. It's almost like we've got white dots and black space. Now we're up to our darkest shadows. And so in these dark ones, we actually want all of the dots to blend together. So it would be like this, like at the edge of this eight, I'm, as I'm showing you, I'm trying to fill in the dots all together. So we have a, a really dark kind of edge. We're not drawing lines because that will spoil the effect, but we are filling in what's left. So we want our darkest shadow to be here on the bottom of the circle, um, the furthest point from that light source. So we at the edge there, we're gonna be putting our dots and getting rid of all of the little gaps in between. So we wanna make that uh, a bit of a harder edge by filling in those black dots. But still we're using dots because if we start using lines, we will lose the effect of the stipple. And also close to the shape is our darkest spot. So we will make sure that it's nice and dark there as well. And so there you have it. You have a nice sphere, a uh, sphere, sorry. And you're now ready to rub it out and you'll see the effect of having um, used your uh, lines as a guide. So I'm just gonna go ahead and rub all this out and you'll be able to see the way that we have created this nice sphere using stippling dots. And there you have a nice sphere that has its lightest area and its darkest area. And you have just drawn that using an effect called stippling. Well done. Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, stay uh, watching and you will see a time lapse of me drawing a fly using stippling. Mm -hmm.